So, Patrick, what'd you think? They should have killed the cat. I mean, that's my first thought here. <laughs> I mean, neither you nor I are big cat people. I have the excuse of I've never really been around cats a whole lot. Maybe if I were, I would like them more. Personally, <laughs> I haven't seen a whole lot to like, but that's just me. At any rate, <laughs> this cat specifically sucks. Well, he's a dick. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, he just like watches when Harry Dean stands. <laughs> like, like the cat sees the xenomorph approaching harry dean stanton and it's just like standing there just like like maybe if you like ran you could get him to move but no i mean no one wants to see a cat or like a dog any kind of like cutesy little animal die in a movie sometimes Mm -hmm. they kind of have to with the plot and sometimes it works but generally you don't want to see an animal like that die but like honestly the cat cat's got some uh blood on its paws here so i i wouldn't and here's the thing you don't even need to kill the cat you just have to have sigourney weaver not go save it because because by saving the cat <laughs> she she uh is is away from her friends when they get killed and maybe she could have saved them yeah yeah you're right also just in general like we see the cat pretty early in the movie and then it, I swear to God, it just disappears completely. No one acknowledges it until <laughs> until until they have that fake out jump scare when it jumps at them when they when they think they're catching the alien. And yeah, it's like what? Like, when about like the leaf we could have weaved the we could have integrated the cat a little better. I think. I agree. Other than the cat, I mean, I I like this movie. I I don't love it. I don't look. A lot of people just love this movie. Think it's a masterpiece. I don't really see it as that. I think it's a good movie. I find it pretty dry. I mean, the movie is very slow, which isn't generally or it's not always a bad thing. But I want like something more out of my characters as much as I like that, like Ripley. I like the idea that she's she's not really like the main character. She just kind of becomes the main character because everyone else dies. I like that. It's refreshing when you don't have like a very clear protagonist from the get go. But at the same time, we don't actually get that much from her character or really anybody else's other than the robot. I mean, Ash is definitely the most interesting character, I think, mainly because there's there's a level of mystery there, and you don't know exactly who he is, what he is, what's going on. Why he turns um, invisible when he puts this gold ring on. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else really is kind of expendable, like Ash's mission briefing says. Yeah, I uh, mean, I like the performances, and this is a like a rare movie where obviously it's a small cast. I'm, like, super familiar with all of these actors, really with the exception of Tom Skerritt. But like, Which, again, you know, I've never I've heard seen, of him. <laughs> I've seen Yafet Koto in a bunch of stuff. He's in Across 110th Street. Mm-hmm. I've, I've really only seen Veronica Cartwright in um, the, birds. in the Birds, I guess. She might be in a Twilight Zone episode, too, back when she was a kid actor. She looks like she was, but Harry Dean Stanton's awesome. I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Ian Holm is great in... The Kenneth Branagh Shakespeare films. He's well, <laughs> not just Shakespeare. He's in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but he's in he's one of the like captains in in the trenches in in Henry V. He's awesome in that. And then obviously Scorny Weaver is very good. I I think actually my favorite one, my favorite performance in this movie might be Veronica Cartwright. Actually, she doesn't have that much to do, but she has like really super expressive eyes. She she's she to me. I believe the terror in her face more than I believe it in other characters. I guess I read this thing where people. I think the Ripley characters are either going to be played by Veronica Cartwright or Sigourney Weaver, and they did screen tests because originally they had both tested for each other's roles, and audiences apparently thought that Sigourney Weaver was a stronger character. And that, that she reminded them of Jane Fonda. Yeah, they, I don't so see it. Ridley Scott <laughs> picked her, apparently. Also, uh, quite famously, this the script originally was written with gender-neutral characters. It's why, mm-hmm. actually, we don't even get Ripley's first name. Mm-hmm. So, in theory, Ripley could have been Tom Skerritt. Which, that's that's pretty neat. That, like, seems oddly progressive for a movie in the 70s. But it's it, it seems kind of like Star Trek utopian future kind of thing. Because this is, yeah. you know, the distant future. Like, you know, people on the ship, are they're all kind of equal. I mean, there is a hierarchy in terms of command, of course. But I don't know. I kind of like that aspect. It's funny that you bring up this kind of utopian future. Because let's talk about Ridley Scott for a second. Lots of ideas of his were eventually removed from this movie. But is he name, dead yet? Did he die? I don't. N- no, I think he's still. Oh no, no, no. Uh, Tony Scott did. Uh, he's his brother. He directed Top Gun, starring in some role Tom Skerritt. <laughs> 
Now hold on. How old is Ridley Scott? That Ridley Scott. He's he's got to be old. He's probably Sir Ridley Scott too. He's eighty three. Yeah, he, he is Sir Ridley. Prick. But uh, no, nah, I'm kidding. He's he's not right guy, I guess. But let's talk about some of his ideas because we we oh, talk no. about utopian society here. It was either him or one of the people working on this that had the idea that people should just be banging all the time and that there should be like lots of sex in this movie. That might have... Okay, so this... this And I'm going to screw up the names here because I know there's a couple of writers here and the guy that wrote the first draft of the script or maybe even more than one draft, but the guy who came up with this story basically just wrote it to be complete schlock. Yeah, and, and so maybe that's where the banging comes in because like this is basically originally when it was written it was basically written to be like a Roger Corman B movie but then yeah. rewrites came in and I think Dan O'Bannon was the one that stepped in and rewrote it I could be screwing that up maybe he was the original writer I don't think so though yeah I'm trying to think I took a note on it somewhere I just can't find it at the moment but I and think Walter Dan Hill O'Bannon... had something to do with this movie I don't know if he was just a producer or a writer but Walter Hill uh he got to start with John Carpenter they John Carpenter's first ever movie Walter Hill worked on and he also was one of many big Hollywood producers to start the series Tales from the Crypt along with like Robert Zemeckis and Richard Donner I'm forgetting the most notable thing about Walter Hill excuse me he directed the Warriors which was came oh. out the same year as this. Oh, okay. Going back to this sex thing, I think it was maybe Dan O'Bannon's idea. Ridley Scott liked it, and they were just going to have like lots of banging in the movie. But then after like talking to the actors, they were kind of like, uh, you know, not only are we not really super comfortable with this, but we also don't know where it would fit into the movie. I'm sure at some point it came up that there were two women and four men also. Yeah, and also... <laughs> and a robot. <laughs> Ridley Scott was still thinking about this idea because I'm pretty sure it's in either the end of Prometheus. Yeah, it's in the end of Prometheus. Oh no, the Alien Covenant. They're, that's they're it, fucking that's in the it. shower. Yeah, that's it. So Ridley Scott, like fucking like 40 years later. Was that, was that like, a scene written for Alien? Because that's, I don't know the, if it was, that's the worst I, scene in the entire series probably. I know, I know. I don't know if it was actually written for Alien, but that scene came out of him still thinking about people supposed to be banging all the time when they're on a spaceship um, with nothing else to do. So there's there's Ridley Scott kind of crazy number one. Ridley Scott kind of crazy number two doesn't really have anything to deal to, to to do with this utopian society. But I got this fun general trivia: that giant dead body in the down ship on the planet, which they call the space jockey. It was designed and painted by, as you pointed out, H.R. What, what's his name? Geiger. Giger. Geiger. No, Ga- Giger. Yeah. I think Giger. But let's go with Giger. It sounds better. This fella, he was disappointed, apparently, that he couldn't put any finishing touches on it because by the time filming commenced, (laughs) by the time filming came for this scene, he just didn't have any time and it was either destroyed right after or partially destroyed before they filmed it by a lit cigarette that was left on the sculpture. And I can only assume that that was Ridley Scott uh, by accident. (laughs) And (laughs) Ridley Scott burnt down Notre Dame Cathedral, confirmed. (laughs) Yeah, there was the this conceptual artist who's worked on the movie Ron Cobb, and when Ridley Scott had apparently this isn't about Ridley Scott being crazy, it's just a neat piece of trivia. Twentieth Century Fox almost didn't allow this space jockey thing to be in the movie because apparently at the time props for movies like this weren't like these huge ginormous things; they weren't so large scale, I guess, and it would only be used for one scene. But this conceptual artist Ron Cobb convinced 20th century fox to leave the scene in the movie because it would show the audience that this wasn't just some low budget b movie so back to ridley scott being crazy crazy with blade runner you know crazy with that unicorn shit this movie at the end you know when ridley is in uh or sorry ridley when ripley is in the spacesuit closet in that uh, escape pod and she's like putting the suit on yeah originally Ridley Scott wanted the scene to be that the alien comes out of its little hidey hole and goes over to the window and starts looking through the window at Ridley's body or damn it at Ripley's body and then the alien was gonna start touching itself no and it's supposed to I be don't this believe weird, this yeah no seriously and it's supposed to be this weird sexual tension no. oh, that the alien no. was like comparing its body to Ripley's body but then uh one of the writers jumped in and was like Ridley we can't we can't do this he's like okay you're even, right. even for Sigourney <laughs> Weaver's sake like no actress deserves that I know and, and I the know. poor guy think... <laughs> whoever whoever he is whatever his name is the poor guy in the xenomorph suit doesn't sure as hell doesn't deserve that <laughs> I know I know 
But yeah, I just think Ridley Scott is fucking nuts. And it also doesn't help that people carry this weird sexually suggestive stuff through when they talk about Alien. Like, I'm reading, I was reading a bunch of stuff earlier, how people are comparing the facehugger's attack on Kane to, like, male rape and, and the chestbuster scene to a form of violent birth. And that the alien is this phallic-looking thing with its yeah the the, the, the chest burster is definitely you know? phallic. I don't know about the xenomorph so much, but the chest burster for sure. Yes, it does look like a penis with a mouth. It's supposed to be a form of violent birth, and it's the whole chest bursting stuff, face hugger, egg laying thing. Xenomorph are supposed to make men uncomfortable because the xenomorph is apparently supposed to be like androgynous. It looks feminine, but also masculine with its giant penis head. How many animals do you like look bullshit. at and be like, wow, <laughs> that is a feminine animal or that is a, like, because that's what the xenomorph is. I don't look at an ant wow, and that, be like, oh, that that's male. looks like a big penis. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, I mean, I'm more uncomfortable just with not with the, I mean, the chest burster stuff's great. Let's be honest. But like I more, what's more uncomfortable to me is just Ridley Scott in general. I actually had a good friend in high school who uh, swore she never wanted to get pregnant specifically because of this movie and the chestburster scene. And it's like, okay. Oh, my God. uh, (laughs) Hopefully she doesn't still carry that with her, but maybe she does. I don't know. To my knowledge, she has not given birth. (laughs) You should ask her if she's still afraid. (laughs) No, we're not talking anymore. Thank you. It's a sore subject. Oh, no. (laughs) Because I made her read Ridley Scott interviews with me once. (laughs) And before I, because uh, I don't really have anything else to say about Alien other than I enjoy the movie, I enjoy the aesthetics, I oh, don't mind I, having I, suspend. I have a, a, a complaint we didn't cover. That whole last like twenty minutes, half hour or so on the ship before we're in the escape pod. Oh my god, they, they need like a warning for like ep- epileptics. Like I <laughs> was. I felt dizzy watching that, and again, this is the first time I'd seen it in a while. But there's so much smoke. There's flashing lights. It's just, I know. I, it was, just, it actually like kind of hurt me to watch that. I, I got a bit of a headache, but I mean, it's tense. Like I can't deny that, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So was a headache. No, I agree with you. I already had a headache watching it. And then I got to that scene. I was like, I gotta walk away from it. <laughs> it sounds like we really enjoyed alien. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't have anything else to say about it other than I think it's a great movie. I really enjoy it. And again, I enjoy the aesthetics and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I um, like it. If I went know. the entire rest of my life and I never see the original alien again yeah i don't think i don't think i would regret it yeah i i wouldn't like we're having a movie night and someone's like hey let's watch alien I, i'm not leaving <laughs> you know yeah, what i mean yeah. that's i would have been okay i would have felt better about the really slow pacing and the boring ass build up if we got more out of the characters because they're mm, they're written okay. to be realistic and just you know going about their day-to-day lives but we don't actually learn a whole lot about them or their relationships and i like i think i want more movie out of the script you know the script is a whole, like kind of those characters are almost written to be like you know kind of documentary like and i mean that works for a lot of people i get it but in a movie like this i want something a little bit more entertaining i guess don't you also think that that's what led to the success of alien that it was kind of realistic or it seemed realistic to audiences you know, you're on like this gritty space, like this gritty, grungy spaceship floating through space. And you just had like a bunch of real people. Yeah, uh, but out, who, complaining who gives about a shit why it's successful or not? We're talking about if it's good or, or entertaining or not. <laughs> like <laughs> okay, weird right. stuff is successful. Avatar is successful. If that's the best all you have... and the Furious movies are successful. And, Ugh, and those are successful because of their realism. <laughs> And I was Shut watching up. a I was watching a Fast and the Furious movie. Well, I think it was like one of the last ones, like seven or eight. My reaction was, boy, Dale Earnhardt was a pussy to go out like that in just like a normal <laughs> car wreck. Like Vin Diesel <laughs> flies cars through buildings, and he, in in this particular movie, he was on multiple cars. He was in driving multiple cars that were on fire within this, this one movie. I'm like, <laughs> like Dale Earnhardt, man. <laughs> <laughs> come on yeah you know who else went out like a pussy fucking paul james Walker. dean princess <laughs> yeah, let's just go through the list poor princess die but anyway, no, i want to leave this princess die sucks it's like the most yeah, overrated listen. person ever she's all like oh i'm the people's queen you know let's ignore the fact that she's <laughs> from a richer family than the queen is you know yeah and then also with, like, with about with about 500 heads of ultra rare black uh deer by the way yeah, I mean, she, she went to the them. most elite public school in the country, and for those 
listening, I mean, I'm going to cut this anyways, but for those listening <laughs> that say like, oh, public school, that's like, you don't have money, you have to have money to do that. No, in the United Kingdom, it's reversed. Public school is, is what in the U.S. we would call a private school. And uh, no, she sucks. She's all like, oh, you know, I, I want my privacy, uh, you know, I don't want to. But then she's all always out talking to the media about like her stupid causes. And stuff. <laughs> no, Princess <laughs> Dye sucked. So after he just shat all over Princess Di, which is fine, I don't give a shit. But this is a quote from O'Bannon when when asked about the sexual imagery in Alien. Ready? O'Bannon himself later described the sexual imagery in Alien as overt and intentional. Wait, why does the quote from O'Bannon? Well, no, hold start on, hold on, sorry, I'm getting to it. I'm person. getting to it. I'm getting to it. One thing that people are all disturbed about is sex. I said, that's how I'm going to attack the audience. I'm going to attack them sexually. And I'm not going to go after the woman in the, sorry, the women in the audience. I'm going to attack the men. I'm going to put in every image I can think of to make the men in the audience cross their legs. Homosexual, oral rape, birth. The thing lays its eggs down your throat. The whole number. Well noted, of course, that that was the thought process for the writing of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's uh, Revenge. But yeah, I got nothing. I'm done with this movie. I'm sick of it. <laughs> 